the alternate cheat sheet on Tableau charts. Tableau Desktop is an awesome data analysis and visualization tool. It allows you to see your data immediately with a few drag and drops. It has a show me feature, which is extremely helpful, especially for those just starting out with Tableau. It allows you to drag and drop or double click on the dimensions and measures that you want to see in your analysis. And then you can use a show me feature that shows the available charts that you can use with the spe specific dimensions and measures that you selected. You'll notice that some of the charts will appear highlighted while others appear a bit more faded. And what this means is um, it's determined by the number of measures, dimensions, bins, etc. that you have placed in your view. Basically, each chart has a minimum specified number of requirements that it needs in order to build a chart, which makes sense. You can't really build a bar, bar chart without any measures. So as you hover each of those views, the description at the bottom shows the minimum requirements. Now let's talk about the types of charts. There are 24 available charts in Tableau's Show Me feature. We can discuss each one of those and talk about when we should be using those charts and what are the minimum requirements. We can get started with a simple text table. It's also called a cross tab. So this is similar to an Excel table. It allows you to see your data in rows and columns. It's not the best visual chart. However, sometimes you want to see just the, just the raw data that you're pulling in. You could dress up this table using color if you wanted to. Minimum requirements are one or more dimensions and one or more measures. The next chart we'll talk about is a heat map. So when to use this? This is similar to a text table, as you can see, but it uses size and color as visual cues to describe the data. It allows us to easily tell a story about the data. And it's an effective way to compare something like categories using color and size. Minimum requirements are one or more dimensions one or two measures. Highlight table. When should we use this? Well, you can use color to highlight data and tell a story. Also, similar to an Excel table, but the cells are colored. This is something you can also do in Excel using conditional formatting, but it's just much easier, um, I think, in Tableau. It can be used to compare values across rows and columns and you can change the color schemes. You can use different colors and you can reverse the sequential colors if needed. So you can go orange to blue or blue to orange, depending on what you're trying to portray. Uh, minimum requirements are one or more dimensions and one measure. The next chart we'll talk about is called a symbol map. So you can use a cool map view to tell a story that has geographical data in it. You can highlight where you have the most sales or to identify concentration of customers in the location. You can use size and color to make this visual really pop. Additionally, you can change the marks to be different shapes and you can even use custom shapes. You can also use map layers to create other visual effects such as removing the coastline or changing it to light or dark. You need to make sure that you have a geographical dimension, for example, state or zip code. And another thing you can do here is you can use the map as a filter for other types of charts, graphs, and tables. Basically, you can use it to drill down. For example, if we created this as a filter, we would want to see, you know, what's going on in California. We would click on it and, you know, out would pop a maybe a text table or something that will give us more detail. Minimum requirements are one geo measure, uh, dimension, zero or more dimensions, and zero to two measures. A field map. So similar to the symbol map discussed previously. However, instead of symbols, you can add color to fill the geographical region in order to tell the story. You can see that the colors are within the borders of the state here. You can play with color transparency and borders to enhance your visual. Again, a geo dimension is required. A field map is really a great visual when you're working with geographical data. The minimum requirements are one geographical dimension, zero or more dimensions, and zero to two measures. Pie charts. When should we use pie charts? Well, some people say we should never use pie charts. Just kidding. <laughs> you can use chart pie charts, but you should really be aware that they're not always very accurate in depicting data. For example, if you didn't have actual data points or the numbers in the pie chart, 
you wouldn't be able to tell which region had more sales, west or central, as the slices of the pie are so similar in size. They are best suited to show proportional or percentage relationships, and when used appropriately, pie charts can quickly show relative value to other data points in the measure. So Tableau recommends that users limit the pie wedges to no more than six. So if you have more than six proportions to communicate, you should consider using a bar chart, which we're going to talk about next. Because as I mentioned, it becomes too difficult to meaningfully interpret the pie pieces when the number of wedges, wedges gets too high. So minimum requirements here are one or more dimensions and one or two measures. Horizontal bar chart. This is probably the most used chart, and for good reason. It makes data really digestible, and it tells a good story. We can easily see which categories have high numbers compared to other categories. In Tableau, you can use colors, labels, or you can sort, as I did here, to tell a story. A horizontal bar chart is a simple yet very effective way to communicate certain types of data, which is exactly why they're so popular. And they're just really easy to use, I think. Uh, minimum requirements are zero or more dimensions and one or more measures. Stacked bar chart. Well, similar to the horizontal bar chart discussed just now, you can use the stacked bar chart to show data in categories that are also stratified or categorized into subcategories. So in the example here, we have sum of sales by product type, which is further divided into region. Um, this allows us to see more details than the regular bar chart would provide. Uh, minimum requirements are one or more dimensions, one or more measures. Side-by-side -side bar chart, yet another bar chart. So similar to the horizontal bar chart I described, you can use this chart to show a side-by-side -side comparison of data. So in this example, we're looking at regions and types of product, which is decap versus regular, and the use of color makes it easier for us to compare the sum of sales within each region for different product types. The side-by-side -side bar chart is similar to the stacked bar chart, except we've unstacked the bars, so to say, and put the bars side-by-side -side along the horizontal axis. Minimum requirements are the same, which are one or more dimensions and one or more measures. Tree map. Well, you can use a tree map to show hierarchical or tree structured data. And you can also use it for part to whole relationships. So tree mapping is ideal for showing large amounts of items in a single visualization simultaneously. So this view is very similar to a heap map, but the boxes are grouped by items that are close in hierarchy. Minimum requirements here are one or more dimensions and one or two measures. The next view I want to talk about is the circle view. So the circle view can be used for comparative analysis. You can customize your view by changing the shapes into triangles, circles, squares, etc. And you can also change the colors and size and borders of the marks that you choose. And it shows the different values that are within the categories depicted. Here you need one or more dimensions, and one or more measures. A side-by-side -side circle view. So this is similar to the circle view. But here we can compare measures such as profit and sales using circles or other shapes as mentioned can be used in specific categories. Minimum requirements are one or more dimensions, one or more measures, and requires at least three fields in order to create that view. A line graph or a line chart, which is continuous. So when should we use this? So to use a line graph, you must have a date either year, quarter, month, day. And this is extremely helpful when you're trying to tell a story of how, how things have changed over a period of time. You can use several number of lines in the view to show continuous flow of data. Minimum requirements are one date, zero or more dimensions, one or more measures. Now let's quickly talk about the discrete line chart. So it's similar to the continuous line chart, except you must have, um, so similarly, you, you need to have a date field in order to use this graph. And the difference between the two is the type of data that you're showing, discrete versus continuous. As you can see, um, the continuous graph shows, let's go back to that for a second. It shows um, the, the continuity and it's smooth throughout the time period. 
as opposed to this discrete chart, which has a break after each quarter or every three months, which is what we set it to. Now, this allows you to slice and dice the, the graph for further analysis. What you need here is one date, zero or more measures, one or more measures. I'm sorry, zero or more dimensions, and one or more measures. The dual line chart. Well, you can use this when comparing two measures over a period of time. So this view produces an unsynchronized axis, but you can right click on the axis and select synchronized axis if that's what you want and if that's what makes sense for the data. So what does that even mean, unsynchronized axis? Well, you see here, the cost of goods sold axis goes from zero to 45,000. The sales axis goes from zero to 110,000. And it looks like the 40,000 here is equal to the 90,000 there, which we know is not. So one thing we can do is if we, in Tableau, if we right click here, there's an option to synchronize axis, which will put them in line and then um, show how the lines actually go through the data over time. So basically, um, it allows for more than one measure to be represented with the two different axis ranges. And this is done by assigning the right and left sides of vertical axis with different measures. In this way, you can compare two different measures. The minimum requirements here are one date, zero or more dimensions, and two measures. An area chart, continuous area chart. So the area chart is a combination, you can think, between a line graph and a stack bar chart. Let me explain. It shows you the relative proportions of totals or percentage relationships. If you use multiple dimensions, the chart stacks the volume beneath the line. Um, and the chart shows the total of the field as well as their relative size to each other. Now, similar to line charts, you must have a date field in order to create a view over time. This chart is used for continuous dates. So what you need here is one date, zero or more dimensions, and one or more measures. And an area chart discrete view. So this is another area chart that shows the same data as the continuous area chart. But this one deals with discrete values. It allows you to have a picture of the slices of data by the time periods you select. Um, the date field is a definite requirement here. You need one date, zero or more dimensions, and one or more measures. Dual combination. When should we use this? Well, this allows you to create a view that shows two different measures. For example, profit and sales. You can show them all in one chart. You can synchronize the axis as it makes sense for your data set. Again, you can synchronize or unsynchronize. It depends on what you are trying to show. What you need here is one date, zero or more dimensions, and two measures. Scatter plot. When should we use these? Well, these are great for comparing two different measures and identifying patterns. Like the circle view and the side-by-side -side circle chart, the scatter plot also uses symbols to visualize data. You can customize the symbols in various shapes. In a scatter plot, both of the axes in the chart are measures rather than dimensions. One measure on the column shelf and another me measure on the row shelf. Now you can also add trend line into scatter plots, and this will clearly define the correlation among your data. Additionally, you can consider adding some useful filters that allow users to interact with the data and identify various trends and patterns. Minimum requirements here are zero or more dimensions and two to four measures. The histogram. It is a visual representation of the distribution of data. So Tableau basically divides your measures into discrete intervals or bins. This is very useful when you want to analyze how the data is actually distributed. What you need here is one measure, a bin field. Box and whisker plot. This is a bit more complex um, from all of the Tableau charts provided. It also deals with the distribution of data. And if you look at the visual, it appears to be a box over here, like this would be a box. It has whiskers sticking out at both ends. Uh, the box basically represents the values between the first and third quartile, and the whiskers represent the distances between the lowest value to the first quartile and the fourth quartile to the highest value. 
Now you can start by determining the median of the data set. This is where the box turns from gray to light gray. It's right, you can see the line right there. Uh, and then the upper and lower quartiles are determined. These are simply the median of the upper half of the data and the median of the lower half of the data. And that forms the box. So the maximum of the data set is the upper range, while the minimum of the data set is the lower range, which forms the whiskers of the plots. Minimum requirements here are zero or more dimensions and one or more measures. And chart. So this is commonly used in project management. So you use this to see if tasks are on schedule. The Gantt chart is a great visual for depicting information in relation to time, uh, whether it is for scheduling or for any other needs. What you need here is one date, one or more dimensions, and zero to two measures. Bullet graph. You can use this graph for comparing target versus actual data. An example is to look at actual cost of goods sold versus budget cost of goods sold. And obviously you can do this with profit, you can do this with sales, whatever makes sense to your data. And it shows you where you've hit your target, where you've missed your target, where you surpassed your target. It's very useful for analyzing things like actual sales compared to target sales. You can play with the size and colors in this chart to help tell a story. You need to have uh, zero or more dimensions and at least two measures. The packed bubbles. Doesn't this look like fun? This is really a fun visual um, to create and to look at. It basically illustrates relational value without regards to any axes. The bubbles are packed in as tightly as possible to make efficient use of space. And you can change the size of the bu bubbles. You can also change the colors. Um, and as I mentioned with map view, uh, you can, I suggest using this bubble chart view as a filter to, to drill down basically on additional data. Um, minimum requirements are one or more dimensions and one or two measures. Thank you for watching the ultimate cheat sheet on Tableau charts.